Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. In October of 1976, we were introduced to a medical mystery drama television series that was produced by Universal Studios and was broadcast on NBC. That series was Quincy M.E., with Jack Klugman starring in the title role as a Los Angeles County medical examiner who routinely engages in police investigations. It all was inspired by a book entitled Where Death Delights by Marshall Houts, who was a former FBI agent. Combining this book with another show that had been broadcast on Canadian television entitled Wojak, they came up with the show Quincy. That Wojak series, which was broadcast by CBC Television, starred John Vernon, who played the title character role. Later on, he guest starred in the third season of Quincy in an episode called Requiem for the Living. The show was originally broadcast as a 90-minute telefilm as part of the NBC Sunday mystery movie rotation in the autumn of 76, alongside Columbo, McLeod, and McMillan. The show proved popular enough after four episodes that the studio decided to extend its format. Quincy was then spun off into its own regular weekly one-hour series. It was initially kicked off with a two-hour episode that was the beginning of a 13-episode shortened run of the series during that season. The show frequently used the same actors for different roles in various episodes, which was a frequent occurrence of many Glenn A. Larson TV programs. The storyline for the series follows Jack Klugman's character of Dr. Quincy, who's a resolute, excitable, ethical, and highly proficient medical examiner for the L.A. County Coroner's Office. He works diligently to ascertain facts about and the reasons for possible suspicious deaths. His colleagues, his friends, and wife all address him by his surname or the shortened name Quince. His character's first name was never given. Although during the third season episode, Accomplice to Murder, his name is shown on a business card as R. Quincy. And in an earlier episode, the name Dr. R. Quincy appears on his office door. While he's engaged in his para-police investigations, he frequently comes into conflict with his boss, Dr. Robert Aston, and the police too, in particular, LAPD Homicide Lieutenant Frank Monahan. Quincy and Aston usually tussle about halfway into an episode, after which time Quince would successfully solve the case, outsmarting the LAPD and his argumentative boss. Monahan and Aston frequently had their own theories about a particular case, which was usually at odds with what Quincy had come up with and his deductions for that death. In earlier episodes, his relationship with both men was often real volatile and nearly adversarial, but this changed markedly in the later episodes, where he appears to have a much closer professional and personal relationship with the two. Frequently, however, the entire investigation would be handled by Quincy himself with little or no cooperation from the police. He was always assisted in the lab by his faithful assistant, Sam Fujiyama. Quince is a well-liked man who lives on a sailboat that's permanently moored at Marina del Rey, California. And he frequents Danny's, which is a restaurant and lounge at that marina that is owned by his friend Danny. He's also quite successful with the women. He was once married, but lost his wife Helen to cancer. 
in the mystery movie installments of the series and the earliest first season episodes, he has a regular girlfriend, a flight attendant named Lee Potter, portrayed by Lynette Meddy, who sometimes accompanies him on his cases. After Lee, he dates several women until near the end of the seventh season when he remarries Dr. Emily Hanover, played by Anita Gillette, who had previously portrayed Helen, his first wife, in a flashback. He also ends up selling the sailboat in that episode called Quincy's Wedding. Now there's a guy named Mark Scott Taylor, who was originally hired as a technical advisor, but he ended up becoming somewhat of a regular cast member because he could operate electron microscopes and other complex instruments. It seemed more cost-effective for the production to give him a recurring bit part than to train the actors to operate the equipment somewhat convincingly. His role was greatly expanded in an episode which Sam had been poisoned and Mark helped Dr. Quincy save his life. He eventually provided a couple of scripts for the series and by season seven had become a co-producer. The regulations for that day prevented the producers from showing any parts of Quincy's autopsies on the screen. The viewers had to rely on Quincy's description of what was going on during the process. These regulations have now been lifted and corpses are seen all the time on the screen in modern police procedurals. The character that Quincy plays was based on real-life Los Angeles County medical examiner Dr. Thomas Noguchi, who is pretty famous for his often controversial conclusions. He's performed autopsies on many stars, including Marilyn Monroe, Natalie Wood, and John Belushi. There were a total of 148 episodes. Jack Klugman appeared in 147. In the episode, Has Anybody Seen Quincy from 1977? Dr. Aston talks to Quincy twice on the phone, but Quincy's voice is not heard, and he's not seen on the screen at all. The reason that Klugman didn't take part in this episode is because he disliked the script, that being one where a body is brought into the morgue and it turns out to be still alive. Klugman thought it was absolutely ridiculous and laughable that a medical examiner of Quincy's nature would fail to notice this problem. This was a really popular show during its time, and it was a really fun watch. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.